More on the shootings in Charleston and how it might shape dialogue in the U.S. about race relations. We're joined by Ray Baker. He's a political commentator and journalist. Thank you so much for joining us. Is this a hate crime or is it terrorism? So there's been conversations to answer that question. Is it a hate crime or is it terrorism? I would like to cite the writer Charles Ellison, who I was conversing with earlier today on social media, who said that it is domestic terrorism. And without a shadow of a doubt, it's domestic terrorism. But it's also a hate crime. It's a crime motivated out of hate. It's a crime motivated out of cultural memory a crime motivated out of the hate of the cultural memory that gets passed down from generations. We saw a release done by Sean McElby of Demos that talked about how millennials are as racist as those who came before them. That came out months ago. This was 21-year-old who did this today. And so we had heard so many older Americans, particularly when President Obama was elected, suggest we're happy that those days have gone past us. But when we see 21-year-olds doing this, when we see modern domestic terrorism, we're left to conclude that this is in the nation's DNA. This is in the fabric of who we are. So the question of hate crime or domestic terrorism, undoubtedly it's domestic terrorism, but hate the, the, the becomes semantics in many ways at some point. Black churches have been the target of violence for decades. Um, in more recent years, we've seen arsons, fire bombings. Is it because of the people inside um, more so than what is happening inside the churches, the religion, uh, the Christianity that's associated with the church? Malcolm X in a speech in the 1960s said they're not killing us because we're Christians, they're not killing us because we're Muslims, they're killing us because we're black. So what we find in the African American church, and this dates back to the antebellum slavery, was a period. The African American church was a place where folks could come and organize and be self-determinant. They could be black on their own terms. And so when we see that, there has been a pushback, a resistance to that from white Americans, particularly those who have the cultural DNA that we talked about, that sees hatred, that sees a black existence as somehow an inherent threat to them, so they take it out in the American way they know how, which is violence. This church has a long history in the African-American community. We've been hearing that all day. We saw that last report um, politically as well. Charleston, South Carolina is where the American Civil War started. Where do you think race relations stand today in the United States? Uh, we've been seeing a lot of incidents over the past several months involving police officers and, and unarmed black men. What does this do to the conversation of race right now? Hopefully it allows us to have, with, and no pun intended, by all means at this awful day, but have a come to Jesus moment. And what we mean by that specifically is a national reckoning of moment of honesty, where we say that, as Dr. Greg Carr of Howard University offers, that loyalty to humanity is betrayal of whiteness. And when we say that, we don't ask that white Americans lack ethnic pride, lack appreciation for who they are, but recognize what white privilege and white supremacy as an institution and as a part of our cultural DNA means for those who are not white. It means we see the mass murder on the six in Wisconsin of the Sikh. It means we see this violence here in African American church in Mother Emanuel down in Charleston, South Carolina. It means that white allies have to stand with all citizens at the table of humanity to rebuke this and expel this from our nation's DNA. Turning to what's happening right now and what we'll see in churches around the country, uh, even around the world, do you think there needs to be more security in churches, or is that really not even uh, a part of all this? I think that's far beyond you or I to begin to say. Each church has to determine for themselves their most effective way of securing the well-being of their parishioners of themselves. But what state of America are we in where we have to ask a question as to whether or not our sacred place is safe for citizens to go. And particularly, we have to ask whether or not the sacred place of minorities. Because one would imagine, if this were to happen in a, a white institution, that there would be some sort of an outcry about this in a way that would not allow us to have this conversation yet again. But here we are, yet again not just with black Americans, as we alluded to earlier in Wisconsin, when we see the otherness, and otherness simply being defined as people who are not white, we're finding that those folks are under attack in their sacred spaces. And so again, we have to have this moment of cultural honesty, of national honesty, because with that moment, we can say, listen, individual prejudices cannot begin to systematically affect people's lives. But when they do, we have a national problem. And when our way of solving our individual prejudices manifests itself in violence, 
that says a lot about the United States that we honestly don't want to have. Lastly, we saw President Obama looking weary on the platform today, saying simply this does not happen in other advanced nations. So what is it about the United States where our language and currency is violence as a way to express our dissatisfaction, as a way to express our frustration, or as a way to express, sadly, our hate and mental illness? All right, Ray Baker, a lot to take in. Thank you so much for your insight.